Ballasting Cato Unitrack on my N-Scale Union Pacific Evanston Subdivision Layout. Hi everyone, I'm Roy Smith. Welcome to my N-Scale Union Pacific Evanston Subdivision Layout. In this video, I'm going to show you how I ballast Cato Unitrack. I believe Cato Track must be painted and ballasted to transform it from its shiny, toy-like appearance into track that looks prototypical. I hope you will find the information in this video to be useful, whether you use Cato Track as I do or any other brand of track. Let me begin by showing you the area of my layout where I am going to be ballasting. I call this area the Eastern Helix because this helix takes eastbound trains on my layout from the classification yard at Green River on the upper level down to staging tracks representing Cheyenne on the lower level. The helix is a kit from Ashland Designs with an overall diameter of 36 inches. This photo shows you the helix before I painted and ballasted the track and before I built White Mountain which now sits atop the helix. There is a separate video on my channel called White Mountain which shows you how I built that terrain feature. I will be ballasting the industrial yard lead track and the double mainline tracks on the upper level of the helix which you see here in the photo. The industrial yard lead track is regular Caddo track with wooden ties. The double mainline track is super elevated track with cement ties. This photo of the prototype I am modeling shows you what I want my track and ballast to look like when I'm finished. The prototype rails, ties, and ballast are all dark gray. I want to achieve that same effect on my layout. I'm going to show you how I applied my ballast, but first let me show you what it looks like now that it's finished. I'm happy with the results and I have achieved the dark gray color I was looking for. One thing to note, it takes an enormous amount of ballast to cover the outer edge of the super elevated track because of its height. Eventually, I will reduce this apparent height by applying ground cover and other scenic materials. At first I tried to use the traditional method to ballast my Caddo track. In the traditional method you spread dry ballast on the track and roadbed. Then with a medicine dropper you gently apply rubbing alcohol or so-called wet water consisting of water with a few drops of dish detergent in it to the ballast. The alcohol or wet water helps the glue to penetrate the ballast. Then you apply a diluted mix of 50-50 white glue and water to the ballast using a spray bottle. For me, this traditional method turned out to be a catastrophe on my Cato track. So I needed to try a different method for applying ballast, and that's what you will see in this video. I should warn you though, it took me three or four applications of ballast in layers to achieve the results I was looking for. So if you think ballasting is tedious, you may not like this method. Personally, I like to do ballasting. I find it to be relaxing and artistic. Let's get started. Before ballasting, I paint my track with a full strength dark gray latex paint. You may be concerned about this paint getting down into the Cato rail joiners and cutting off the flow of current in the track. But actually, I painted my track more than a year ago and have been running trains on it ever since without a single electrical problem. In this video, I'm simply repainting a short section of track for demonstration purposes to show you how I did it. By the way, I did try using paint pens and was not happy with the results, so I turned to latex paint instead. Then, before the paint dries, I clean the top of the rails with a dry, clean cloth.
And after the paint dries, I clean the top of the rails again, gently, with a bright boy. Now it's time to apply ballast. I begin by applying full strength white glue to the plastic Caddo road bed. This first application of ballast with full strength white glue will help subsequent applications of ballast with diluted glue from sliding down the smooth sides of the plastic Caddo road bed. I am very careful not to get any white glue on the tops of the ties. Then I spread out the white glue evenly with a small brush to ensure complete coverage. Now I begin the first application of ballast. I like to take a pinch of ballast and carefully sift it with my fingertips. This enables me to apply the ballast where I want it to be and in the amount I want. At this point, don't touch the ballast that you have applied or it will get all gummed up. Wait at least a half an hour for the white glue to dry somewhat if you want to change the form or slope of the ballast by lightly and gently tapping it with your fingertip. Here you can see that I have completed the first application of ballast to the lead track for the industrial siding. I will apply ballast to the mainline tracks off camera. When the glue has thoroughly dried, I will vacuum up any loose ballast because if I don't, that loose ballast will gum up when I brush on glue for the second application of ballast. Now it's time to apply a second layer of ballast. It's necessary to do this in order to fully cover the plastic Caddo roadbed and to achieve prototypical looking track ballast. In the second and any other subsequent application of ballast, I no longer use full strength white glue. Instead, I use a 50-50 mix of white glue and water. I like to add a few drops of rubbing alcohol to this mix to help it penetrate both the first and second applications of ballast. I like to brush off any excess ballast that may have gotten on the ties. As long as I didn't get any glue on top of the ties, the ballast remains dry and brushes off easily.
all right, it took me four applications of ballast to get the results I wanted, but I'm done. Now it's time for one last step, the application of a wash. My wash consists of one part dark gray latex paint to 18 parts of water. I like to add a few drops of white glue to the wash as well to help affix any remaining granules of loose ballast. Of course, you don't have to apply a wash. I do it because I like my ballast to be a slightly darker gray color. I have not applied ballast between the rails. I believe this is optional with Cato Track. You can do it if you want to, and you can do it by carefully applying white glue between the ties using a micro brush. If you have a medium or large layout, though, it could be a very time consuming and tedious process. In addition, it's very difficult to do because the wooden ties in Cato Track are partially embedded in Cato's plastic roadbed. And it's even more difficult on track with cement ties, which are so deeply embedded that the tops of the ties are barely visible. In summary, these are the steps I used to apply ballast to my Cato Unitrack. One, I painted the track a dark gray color. You can use paint pens or other weathering instruments. Two, I cleaned the tops of the rails after painting them, first with a dry cloth while the paint was still wet, and then with a bright boy after the paint had dried. Three, I applied full strength white glue to the sides of the plastic roadbed to hold this and all subsequent applications of ballast in place. Four, I sifted the ballast onto the track with my fingertips. Five, I vacuumed up any loose ballast after the glue had dried. Six, I had to apply up to four layers of ballast using 50-50 glue to get the effects I wanted. Seven, I painted the ballast with a thin wash, something which is optional because I prefer a darker color. Eight, you can apply ballast between the rails. This is optional and I chose not to do this. And nine, and something which is not optional, Begin to run your trains. The ballasting is done and I've cleaned up the loose ballast and top of the rails. Now it's time to run trains. Here, number 5791, a Cato AC 4400CW, is pulling covered hoppers eastbound. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.